Wow. <laughs> yeah. What is that? Saturday morning in Tasmania. 4.20 a.m. New Zealand, here we come. So this is like the seventh time we've been through Melbourne Airport and we still have no idea where we're going. Okay. We've landed in New Zealand. <laughs> Got Sarah here. Tell us a story. Uh, my best friend lives in Worcester, and her and her husband got married uh, last year, and they're obsessed with Treehouse, and they had it at the wedding, and like at the hotel before the wedding, it was all over their wedding. Oh, <laughs> awesome! We just arrived to Kaikoura, New Zealand. Andrew's walking in, he's got a party in the pocket right now. Absolute vibe. And then, uh, this is what the accommodation looks like. A little Airbnb action. Yeah, that'll do. All right, morning in Kaikoura. Just took a drive around here, enjoyed the ridiculously amazing scenery of the surrounding mountaintops and ocean and sea. One thing that I notice here versus what we're accustomed to in America is that obviously this is new geography. Uh, the coasts are super rugged, uh, obviously the result of some recent volcanic uplift, but it's just fascinating to be in a different part of the world and see something that uh, is very new and certainly very memorable. All right, so first, the Myrtleboro Valley stop of the day is, I believe, what's an institution, uh, at least from a distance, Cloudy Bay. All right, so one quick little story about this stop and why it's important for us in our hop journey. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the Marlborough region here in New Zealand, it's quite famous for its highly expressive Sauvignon Blanc grapes that typically produces a very modest wine, very young, youthful wine. It is absolutely overflowing with juicy citrus and tropical fruit and pungent white wine flavors. Now, why is that important for this journey? Well, we're on our way to uh, smell some hops that are also exclusively grown in this region, which is called Nelson Sauvin. Nelson Sauvin got its name because of its striking resemblance to this amazing grape varietal that we see behind us. So it's about experiencing this place, tying the agricultural roots together, drawing inspiration. And then, you know, this is all unique to us. Lauren and I have not visited New Zealand yet. Neither Andrew, Porter, nor uh, Alex have visited New Zealand. So uh, experiencing this place, understanding the people that are responsible for it, and, you know, just taking the memory of this experience and trying to honor it through producing the best liquid possible with the hops grown from this region. We've made it to Tasman Bay. Uh, it's pretty sweet. You may or may not be familiar, but we named a beer after this region in Tasman Bay, which is a Pilsner brewed with Nelson hops. It's one of my favorite beers that we make. And right behind me here is Mr. Abel Tasman, the namesake of the bay and uh, also fortuitously of the beer. So, in from the beach, now for a drink. We are high up on the hill above Nelson in the in Upper Muteri. Wait, I'll take it for you. And we are at Muteri Inn, the oldest pub in New Zealand. Pretty sweet. Porter's just in the way of the signs, fine. It's all <laughs> Thank you.
I think that was probably maybe the most chill the group got on the entire trip. Just very relaxing spot overlooking the countryside. Good conversation, great food. What a spot. This was amazing. This was an amazing lead into tomorrow where we begin our search for New Zealand hops. It's going to be special. All right, so we're, our, we're here at Freestyle Hops. We're already learning some incredible information. Uh, their time from harvest to pelletization is essentially a linear process that is uninterrupted by storage. So hops come in from the field, they get processed into, into cones, they get dried, they get baled, and then they get sent straight to pelletization with very little time in between. So kind of the freshness aspect here, the linear nature of production, and the expediency with which the hops are processed is incredible. So already I can see like smaller operation, more curated. I, I love seeing the small uh, kiln beds. It just tells me that uh, things are super, super hands-on and heartfelt here, which I know always results in a better end product. All right, so we're out in the experimental field here at Freestyle. Uh, apparently these aren't uh, experimental rows or even uh, pole to pole. They are individual seedlings. So there must be at least 200 plants out here. So we're just gonna bomb around. Again, I'll have you guys enjoy some sensory with me. I'm just gonna give my feedback. A lot of these could be garbage and some of them could actually be electric. We don't know what we're going to find, but we're gonna make our way around this field and just uh, see if there's any diamonds in the rough. Pick a winner off the bat, jeez. Oh, yeah. This one's cool. This one has some mandarin orange, kind of like bubble gum, a little bit of zesty spice. This is unique. It's got kind of a really wet interior to it, too, which is cool. It's like lemon drop and, uh, there's like a distinct earthiness to it, too, that's pretty amazing. But yeah, it tastes like those sugared lemon drops that my grandmother used to have. Here you go. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah watermelon. watermelon. It's pretty good. Kind of, I get a little bit of red berry, too. Red berry? Quick little story here about viability of the hops. So when they do the crosses and then they plant them, uh, there are some telltale visual signs as to whether or not they'll be viable on a commercial scale. Uh, one of which some of, these, some of these vines grow and they just have opposing pairs. And that's a telltale sign that they aren't gonna work. Um, they look quite pretty though. Wow. All right, you guys might remember Jubilee. Uh, it's one of the beers that we said is gonna be a core beer moving forward. It's made with peacherine hops, which is a proprietary variety grown here at Freestyle. I've never experienced it in the field. This is an exciting moment for me personally, uh, being so excited about this hop that we made the first core beer in several years uh, after the first batch. Let's dig right into it. Holy, holy shit. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. What is that? Was well, it live? Lemon lime fruit loops. It's incredible. It's so weirdly mild and soft though. Like it's so rounded. There's Gentle. none of that floral anything going on. Right. It smells like I want extract in a cone. Yeah. I want a can of Jubilee right now. So bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. <laughs> Sorry, Ellen. 
Holy beep. Yeah, holy. <laughs> Michael, can I get a beep on that? <laughs> we'll edit that out. Damn. <laughs> wow, this field is so cool, too. Yeah, they're like beautiful. The, the way that they like kind of arch and grow over. There's really amazing like humidity in this field. Like it, it feels fertile, which is cool, too. You said that they're kind of bummed they use this field because the soil is not as as good as other areas for growing so it doesn't produce as much so they're trying to redevelop the soil underneath they yes. definitely do that in the city plants like oats and peas and stuff in between it smells yeah. like peach Most cotton good. candy it's yeah. like sugary sweet <laughs> the peach is crazy like peach sorbet i don't know i can't i love it some cones i get like motuweka on steroids like big lemon lime and then other ones is like peach fruit loops it's so oily, look at my hands. Yeah. yeah, I know. I'm sticked up. Yeah, look at the vitality of that. Here, I'm oh. gonna grab the camera. Look at the vitality of that vine right there. Right. Wow. All right, so Nelson, this is a hop I've been using for most of my professional brewing career. And I've never had the opportunity to experience it in a field. About to do so for the first time. Holy sh! Wow, that is that is literally. <laughs> that is way better than I expected. I don't know what I expected, but that is, that smells amazing. God, to be in this place with friends and the woman I love and just get to experience this, uh, especially considering this hops and some of the most important beers that we make, is something I most certainly will never forget. Here, I want you to smell this one. things in brewing that it's a mixture of art and science and we do them believing that they are the right thing to do and when you combine all those things it turns out being better than the sum of its parts so I'm getting some of that energy here and I appreciate it. A quick recap we are on our way out of freestyle hops we had a magnificent day here Got to experience several of our favorite hop varieties in the field. Nelson, Matueka, Ruaka, Cascade, uh, Waimea, which was a new favorite. We got to walk through the expansive experimental hop field, which was very unique to what we had experienced previously. Literally every seedling, every plant, every vine was a different hop variety, uh, many of which were throwaways, but many of which were potential diamonds in the rough that they're gonna investigate propagating here. So. Man, we are leaving here with a good feeling. I'm speaking on behalf of the whole team. Just kind of the look on the guys' faces and the enthusiasm that they're showing for having experienced this day here in New Zealand is infectious for me and hopefully infectious for you. So we don't have any plans tonight. There's nothing on the itinerary. Sounds like the guys have a beachfront Airbnb. We're going to get some firewood. We're going to get some food from the local market. We're going to cook ourselves some dinner and we're just going to enjoy the, uh, the evening here in New Zealand. The road travels on. To admit that we kind of just crashed the party here at Battery Hill, uh, it's been nice to be shown around and you know, they're late in the harvest here. A lot of what they harvest has already been brought in, but we're fortunate to be up on this ridiculously scenic vista. Uh, in all of my years of visiting hop farms, I've never quite seen anything like this.